Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play Cat President of a Perfect Union, a visual novel in uh, where we're going to, well, play with cats that want to run for president. Yes, this is going to happen. We're going to play this. Let's go and check it out together, shall we? Let's start a new game. This game features six different main storylines with three different endings each, which is really actually uh, impressive, I got to say. So... Let's get, uh, let's get right into it. I never dreamed I would get involved into politics. I mean, I'm just a plain Jane, a nobody. I've never even voted before. But somehow, I found myself swamped by presidential candidates and they all want me to be the campaign manager. But first I should back up and explain how I got the situation. It all started last week when I heard someone calling my name at the park. What's my name again? Please input the perfect name for heroine. Um, ooh, good question. How, how about Wheat, Wheat Lena? Well, how do you feel about that? Wheat Lena. All right. Wheat Lena, Wheat Lena. Hi, who are you? This is my best friend, Lizzie. Wheat Lena. Lizzie, did you hear? They're having the big debate tonight. I got us tickets. A debate? What about? Gosh, don't you know? The presidential debate. Oh, it's President Daisy Doodle coming to town? That's so cool. I like her. What is she going to debate? No, actually, the debate is for the presidential candidates who are running to replace Daisy Doodle when she leaves office next year. All six of them are in town and are going to debate important issues like foreign policy and catnip. Plus, they're all adorable. I want to hug and pitch. Eat one of them. That is usually not a thing you hear about, uh... Presidential campaigns, but yeah. Alright, I should have probably said something about this earlier. 20 years ago, the government got so corrupt that the Supreme Court decided to ban all humans from politics. Now the only politicians we have are cats, and I know it sounds crazy, but the government is a lot more effective this way. I really have a hard time believing this. I don't know, I think I'll stay home. No way, you have to come. If you don't, I'll never forgive you. In this game, you will occasionally be asked to choose Wheatlina's responses. Choose carefully the options you pick affect which ending you get. The better the options you choose, the better the ending. All right, I love cats. I can't wait to see them. I love cats. Can't wait to see them. Me neither. This will be so much fun. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. I mean, a presidential debate just with cats? Yeah, I'll watch. I'd watch that. We got there about an hour early since nothing was going to happen for a while. I decided to explore a bit and maybe see if I could find a bathroom. It wasn't long before I got lost. Ugh, this place is like a maze. How are you supposed to figure out where to go? They need signs or something. After wandering around for a few minutes, I found a fancy looking door. Well, that is not a bathroom. I stepped inside, but no one was there. Couldn't you tell by like just slightly opening the door that that is definitely not a bathroom? Empty. I guess I'll try another room. I beg your pardon? Oh! <laughs> oh, it's a cat! Did you lose your owner, little guy? I've never been so insulted in my life! You think I'm a common street cat? How dare you talk to me like that? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know you were a talking cat. Of course. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. I should have security throw you out immediately. Who's that? Ah, oh, don't be so mean. A cute girl comes wandering in and you try to have her kicked out? That's not what I would do. Yeah, I like your style. My style? Well, yeah, you snuck all the way backstage to meet with us. That's pretty brave of you. You've got I like you. Wait, if I'm backstage, that means... <gasps> oh my gosh, you three are the presidential candidates. Bingo, I'm Frisky. It's a pleasure to meet a beautiful woman like yourself. Oh my, Frisky. I'm DJ Nibbles. I'm the young, cute candidate. That's pretty straightforward. More like the empty-headed kitten who keeps rushing into danger. I can help if something gets into trouble. Oh, if I sometimes get into trouble, I'm naturally curious. Naturally stupid, you mean. And that grumpy guy over there is Thunderpaw. He always seems to be upset over something. Thunderpaw, not true. I'll be happy when you lose us drop out of the race. I'm not gonna drop out. I'm in it to win it. So, darling, you didn't tell us your name. Well, Frisky. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. My name is Wheatlina. Well, Wheatlina. Why don't you come with me for a little while? I'll guarantee you enjoy it. Okay, back off there, Frisky. You, you want me, so I can lead you back to the audience area, of course. Oh, okay, oh, of course. Hey, Frisky, don't keep your guests all to yourself. Let me help her guide her back to the seats. Have you two forgotten that the debate starts in 45 minutes? We don't have time to be escorting random humans all over the place. I'll call security and they'll have you removed from the premises. Uh, nope, that's okay. I think I can find the way myself. Are you sure I wouldn't mind helping you? I'm sure you all focus on debate stuff. Bye. Goodbye, Wheatlina. Nice meeting you. 
Well, Thunderpaw looks uh, like a very fancy cat. I got out the room as quickly as I could. I couldn't believe it. I accidentally interrupted three of the presidential candidates. What kind of goofball does a thing like that? I decided to get by my seat as quickly as possible, but I ended up running into more cats. Hey, guys. Uh-oh. Hey, humans aren't allowed back here. I'm so sorry, I got lost and I don't know how to get back to my seat. I understand these hallways can be pretty confusing sometimes. Yep, the first time I was here, I was chasing my tail for hours. Sure. So you're not mad at me? No, we're not mad. These sorts of things happen. The door you're looking is the third one on the right. Thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Whitlina, by the way. Who are you? I'm Elvis, Tiberius Kale III, but you can call me Kale. Okay. The cat on the left nodded the head as he said this. Nice to meet you, Kale. Are you also running for president? I certainly am, although most people say I should drop out because I'm last in the polls. Well, cheer up, Kale. At least you made it all the way to the debates. That's something. I'm not at the debates. I'm Dr. Nom Noms. I'm also not polling very well at the moment. If it wasn't for the Calicos, I'd probably be out of the running. Well, you both seem like very nice cats. Made a debate will boost your popularity. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm lucky to be here tonight. I'm just hoping to debate the issues and do my best for all the alley cats out there. Ah, uh, thank you, Dr. Nom Noms. Thank you both very much for helping me. If I could vote for both of you, I would. That's very kind of you to say. Please enjoy the debate tonight. Okay, I guess we met the candidates. I followed their directions, made it back to my seat. All right, very good. Hello. Phew, finally made it. Wait, Lena, where were you? You'd never believe me even if I told you. You have to tell me later the show is about to start. I mean, the debate. I would not call a show, I guess. Then again, it's cats. There's even a little cat at the podium. Milk. After that, the moderator came on stage and explained the debate rules to the audience. The rules were pretty simple. Clap whenever there's a response you like, but no interrupting the debaters and no cat calls. Ha! <laughs> the debate itself was pretty interesting. Thunderball was an in intense debater. He yelled at all the other candidates and constantly insulted them. If his goal was to look stronger than his opponents, then he succeeded. I wonder who's that gonna be? It's, it's, so, it's, so, it's so subtle. It's so subtle who that could possibly be. Frisky didn't uh, try to appeal to all voters. Instead, he focused on his attention on just one group. Women! He couldn't stop talking about how much he loved women. I didn't think it was very professional, but my friend Lizzie liked it. Or DJ Nibbles was as energetic as ever, which ended up hurting his debate style. He rushed into his answers with such enthusiasm that he tripped over his words, and twice he lost his place during speeches. Still, it's nice to see such refreshing honesty in a political debate. Dr. Nom Noms did not do very well. He flopped most of his answers and went a long tangent about a bird bath he visited last year. It's almost like he was trying to fail. Kale did okay, I guess. He was a solid speaker, but he was definitely overshadowed by all the other personalities in the room. I can see why he's last on the polls. As for the final debater, Rover! There was something different about him. I don't know what it was. He just seemed, I don't know, really different from the cats. Hmm, yeah, I wonder. At the end of the debate, the motorbike called for sil silence. All right. We've heard all the candidates' responses, but now we want to hear a question from a real person, an average citizen, not a politician. That's why we picked a randomly selected audience member to give the final question of the debate, and that person is... Wheat Lena! How, how do you know my name? What? Me? Come up, Wheat Lena, tell everyone your question. Well, um... Okay, I don't know a lot about politics, but I know that politicians are supposed to help people. So I guess I want to know how all of you will help me. I mean, I lost my job at the grocery store last week and I'm still having trouble finding a new one. If I don't get a job soon, I might lose my apartment. I know my personal problems don't matter much in the political world, but what will you do as president to help people like me? Good question. That is a very good question. Yeah, I, I said that. All questions that were asked here tonight have been good, especially the question of societal inequality between cats and humans. Kel, you're a salad-headed moron. This isn't a question about social inequality. Yeah, besides, the real social inequality is between cats and dogs. <laughs> I have a suggestion. You can work for me, Wheatlina. Dr. Nom Noms. What? You need a job and I need a new campaign manager. I'll hire you. That'll will, that will help your problem, right? Yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah, I want to hire you, too. No way. You want to work on the DJ Nibbles campaign with me. I'm sure there's room for you on the Kale campaign. You don't want to work for these losers. Work for Thunderpaw. I only hire the best and brightest. And Rover, I have one question to ask. Do you have a dog? No. Then I'll offer my services as well. Come work for me. No, me. Me. Oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming. You all want me to work for you. Well, I hate to interrupt you, but we're running out of time for the debate. If you could please choose a candidate now. 
that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, that's the dilemma I found myself in. Six great cats all running for president and they all want me to work for them. How can I pick just one? I like all of them. In the end, I decided to go with... Oh no! Choosing time! Ah! That's gonna upset the most people because... I'm pretty sure someone always has a favorite. Okay, I'm either gonna go Rover or Thunderpaw. <laughs> meow. Meow. I like that. Meow. Oh, they're all really cute cats, but I, I think I have to go with th Thunderpaw. I, I gotta I gotta see where this one leads. <laughs> he looks so stupid. Chapter one, Thunderpaw. <sighs> In which we start to wonder whether we made a huge mistake. I decided to go with Thunderpaw. He seemed to be the most competent candidate out of the group. Plus, I like his hair. I think I'll go with Thunderpaw. Ha <laughs> ha yes. See how she picked me and said all of the other losers? None of them stand a chance against me. Aw, oh, I was hoping she'd pick yeah. me. When you decide to quit Thunderpaw's campaign, I'll be waiting. This brings an end to tonight's debate. Thank you for watching, everyone. Well, what an odd, odd, odd choice. Yeah, be my campaign manager. I don't need to know what you can do. Wow, I can't believe it. You just got a job working for Thunderpaw. Are you sure you can handle it? No. I think I can. Sure, he's a little rough around the edges, but... Yeah, I worked in a grocery store before. Sure, I can handle the presidential campaign. <laughs> Easy. Rough around the edges. He's a tiger. He's a shark. He has a tiger shark in a pool of piranhas. That doesn't even make sense. I, I agree. Exactly. Thunderpaw doesn't make sense most of the time. I get a feeling he says whatever random things pops into his head. It's like the YouTube comment section decided to run for president. Ha, ah, I got the opposite sense. Like, everything he said in debate was really well rehearsed. Ha, ah, he sounds just like a Thunderpaw supporter. Always making excuses for it. Outrageous behavior. Yeah, I, I, got, I got a pretty good idea who's that. Anyway, let me tell you how to tame this wildcat. Do not give in to him. Do not cooperate. Well, how do you know? What do you mean? He's just like a bully. If you refuse to be pushed around, he'll respect you. If you do whatever he says, he'll crush you underfoot without a second thought. So I should try to start fights with him? Basically, yeah. If you give this cat an inch, he'll walk all over you for the rest of life. How do you know? How do you know that, Lizzie? So don't let him boss you around, even if he's your boss. Thanks for the advice, Lizzie. Now I'm afraid to start my job. I'm just being a concerned friend here. Yeah, thank you, Lizzie. Thank you. Now I'm freaked out. I appreciated Lizzie's concern, but I figured she was wrong. Thunderpaw wasn't really a nasty cat, was he? He was probably just hamming it up for the cameras. Still, Lizzie had a point. Some people own cats, and sometimes cats own people. Thunderpaw definitely seemed like a person owner. If I wasn't careful, he put a collar on me and take me out for walks. I kept that in mind as I went backstage to meet Thunderpaw. He was as angry as ever when he saw me. The music is really weird. You're late. Don't you know I have better things to do than wait for you? I'm sorry I didn't know you were busy. Maybe next time you should tell me when and where to meet. Yeah, well, maybe next time you should tell me where and where to meet. Is that your excuse for being late? I didn't know when the meeting was. Listen, girly, I don't want to get excuses from my employees. The only thing I want from you is results. Your employees must be mind readers then because you didn't tell me to meet you here. You didn't give me any information after you hired me. All you did was go off stage with all the other candidates. Oh yeah? Then how do you, how do you, how do you know to come here? I didn't know, I just guessed. You were in the green room area before the debate. I figured maybe you would like to be here after the debate too. Good instincts, kids. I knew I did the right thing in hiring you. I'm, I'm doing this voice for him now. Did he just go from insulting me to complimenting himself in two seconds flat? Lizzie's right. This cat has a huge ego. Okay, Thunderpaw, the debate is over. You don't need to put on the big bad Tomcat at it anymore. Act! This ain't act! I always behave like that. Uh-oh, not good. Do you really? You're never nice to other people. Ever. Look, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to win. Have you seen the front runner of the other political party? She's a real hawk. You're going up against the bird? Cool. I mean, cool. What? Are you stupid or something? Of course I'm not going up against the bird. I'm saying she's a fighter, a real alley cat. And the only way to stop her is to be just as mean and ferocious as she is. When times are tough, you gotta be tougher. That's what my father always said when I was growing up. I'm sorry, I'll try not to ask foolish questions in the future. It's not nice of you to call me stupid. Uh, yeah, it's not nice to call me stupid. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. In that case, I accept your apo- You fool! What? The first rule of politics is never apologize for anything. Apologizing shows weakness that nobody will vote for a weakling as a president. What's the second rule of politics? No voting for independence. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now about your job. I said you could be my campaign manager or something like that. Truth is, I already got a campaign manager. A good one. Ooh. 
Me, of course. I'm running this campaign by myself, but I still need your help. And I'll help where I can. What do you need most from me? Speeches, schedules, video editing skills? <laughs> More like kitten sitting. Kitten sit. Oh, you mean babysitting. I didn't know you have children. I don't. I was engaged once, but it, it didn't work out. Why not? None of your business? That's why not. The important thing is... <sighs> what's wrong? I hate to admit it, but I have a younger brother. Younger? We're twins, Thund- Oh. We're twins, Thunderpaw? Who's that? <laughs> yeah, but I'm the successful one. You're an idiot. Ah, thanks. I knew you loved me. Sorry I missed the debate. I was too busy dealing with the protesters outside. Oh, you stopped the protesters from getting in and disturbing the debate? That was nice of you. Ha! Are you kidding? I was leading the protesters. Down with debates! Stop the fat cats from ruining politics! Millionaires are not our friends! But your brother was in the debate. You wanted to stop him? Eh, not my problem. I can help who I'm related to. I feel the exact same way. Said hello to Banders. Hey yo, Thundy. This is the manager you're planning to hire, or are you looking for a new fiancé? Um, hi to nice to meet you, Banner. I'm Wheat Lena. Good to meet you too, and don't listen to this old sourpuss here. I'm the best cat of fluffy tail twins. I told you, don't say our last name in public. It sounds ridiculous. I'm running for president, not the fuzzy cat show leak. This is the reason I hired you, Wheatlina. I can't let this guy out of my sight for five minutes. He was always stirring up trouble and spelling out bad news for our campaign. Don't listen to him. Thunderbar is the one who always stirring up trouble and causing arguments. If anything, he is bad news for his campaign. I gulped. It looked like I would have to keep a close eye on Thunderpaw and Banders and help ensure the campaign wouldn't fail. But I was up for the challenge, right? Oh, good question. I don't know. Was I? I guess we'll have to figure it out together. Chapter 2 In which we create a scandal over two cents. Sounds good. I'm, I'm down. We flew to Miawa on Thunderpaw's private jet. We seated next to Banders. <laughs> why, why are you like in the sky? So, Banders, what do you do for a living? I'm a political protester. I try to stop all the businessmen and millionaires from ruining or oh, running the government. Because do you know what it's called when a handful of billionaires runs the government? It's called oligarchy. I looked it up in the word in the dictionary today, and that's totally what it means. I'm so proud of myself and my vocabulary. But your brother's a billionaire business cat who's running for president. Yeah, go figure. I guess not all twins turn out the same. Another word for you. Home equit. <laughs> Home equity loan. Do you know what that is? Nope. Neither do I, but lots of people have them, so they must be important. We need to find a way to make the home equi uh, equity loans more equitable. That's what I'm saying in my next speech. Okay, seriously, I don't understand this. Your brother is to give speeches and your job is to boycott speeches? This is some kind of strange sibling rivalry? Yeah, I don't know. I think Thunderpaw is a strange one. Me? I'm a perfectly normal cat. I mean, sure, I sometimes get arrested for attacking furniture stores, but there's a good reason for that. Furniture stores have vacuum cleaners. I hate vacuum cleaners. Right. Maybe you should try protesting somewhere else. I'm sure there's a college that would love to have you speak to them. Not doing nothing. Meow is where all the presidential candidates are right now, so that's where I'm going to be. Where they all meow -a. That's where the first primary is going to be held. Primary, another dictionary word. It's like a mini election. Used to figure out who the candidates will be in the general election. This year we're having primaries in three states. Only three states are having primaries? I thought they had primaries in every state. They used to have them everywhere until politicians decided that the other 47 states don't really count in presidential elections. You know, cause they've voted the accept way in every election for the past 30 years. <laughs> so you're saying that only three states get to choose who the next president will be. Yep, that makes a lot more sense than picking a president through popular vote or whatever. Meow has the first primary, followed by New Clawshire and South Catalina. I was going to ask more questions. Politics can be confusing when I was summoned by the front to the front of the plane. Wait, Lena, come here. We need to go over our plan. Coming. All right, what's 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 the plan for tonight? I heard to the area where Thunderball was sitting. He was comfortably resting in a large chair that could easily have held three people. Ooh, fancy business class. Hey, how come you get this big chair when I'm stuck in the back with banders? Because I'm more important than you. Ooh, ouch. I'm important. I'm important. I'm your valued member of this campaign. You're the random girl I hired two days ago. Now stop back talking and listen. <laughs> Dr. Nom Noms was invented to, uh, invited to speak at the Meow Voters League dinner party tonight, but he had to cancel at the last minute for whatever reason. I want you to make sure I take this place. That way I can badmouth him in front of his supporters. Badmouth him? 
You know, I'll say something like, Dr. Nom Nom's promised to be here, but he's a liar. You can't trust him as far as you can throw him. His word isn't even worth two cents. In fact, that's probably why he isn't here today. Someone offered him two cents to go somewhere else. Yes, he's so cheap that he'll chase pennies. You want a cheap skate like that for president, or do you want someone like me who came here like he promised? Are you trying to say that Dr. Nom Nom's is bad with money? Maybe. I, I don't know how he is with money. I don't follow his financial situation. Heck, I don't even follow my own financial situation. I got people who do that for me. That's because I'm a rich business cat, not a cheapskate like Dr. Nom Noms. You can't just make up bad things about other people. That's slander. Ha! If I wanted to hear the definition of slander, I'd my, ask my dictionary of a brother. Okay, let me put it another way. If you don't know how Dr. Nom Noms is with money, why are you talking about it? Because it makes him look bad and it makes me look good. Get with the program, lady. Dr. Nom Noms isn't a real contender. I am. I think Dr. Nom Noms happens to be a very nice cat. You know that he never criticized your financial situation. Yeah, that's true. He's a lightweight like that. In this competition, you gotta go big or gotta go home. I'm not going home. Although, my home is pretty nice. You should visit sometime. Lots of people visit my home, and they all say it's wonderful. I'm sure you enjoy it. But I didn't come here to talk about homes. Ladies and gentlemen, although I did want to know that my home is valued at over $10 million as of ja last July, I came here to talk about this country, and now I'm going to make it great. How do you make this country great? Simple. Get rid of all the losers who are bringing the country down. Repeal the tax laws which protects crybabies from paying their fair share. Defeat the gridlock in Washington, which prevents any work from getting done. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring up a plastic bag with me on the first day to work because I've got a lot of trash to clean up. I'm going to fire anyone who tells me that's impossible or that's immoral out of a cannon. I'm going... You know you're on a plane and not giving a speech to a crowd, right? Ah, uh, right. I know that. I was just practicing. Right. So what do you want me for again? You got my email, right? I need you to add stuff to my website. Something classy and presidential. Maybe look at the other guys' websites for ideas. But show it to me first. I don't want you to put something stupid with my name on it. I would never write anything to upset you. If I wrote something stupid, it'd probably be true. Ooh, okay, that's maybe, you know. Let's say I would never write anything to upset you. I would never write anything to upset you. Good. Why don't you start off by writing about the Nom Nom's financial scandal I just invented? It makes him look dumb. No, it makes you look like a crazy cat who invents stories for no reason. Whatever, just run the story. I'm sure people will be interested in it. And write me speech all about it too. But there is no financial scandal with Dr. Nom Noms. You literally made the whole thing up like two minutes ago. Who cares if I made it up? It could be true for all I know. And what are you going to do when reporters find out that it's fabricated news? They're going to blame you for wasting their time inventing pointless stories. If that happens, I'll say that Nom Noms is inventing stories so that he's secretly a drug dealer or whatever. You're not going to apologize for lying about him? I never apologize for any shit thing, but you should. You should apologize for wasting my time with pointless questions about honesty and ethics. Those things have no place in politics. Thunderpaw was such a horrible cat. I couldn't believe that I was working for him. Oh, I can. I wanted to say something really insulting to his face, but I forced myself to take a deep breath and calm down. All I'm saying is that you should try a different strategy. Maybe you should try being nice. For a change, pretend to you respect the other candidates instead of attacking them all the time. You think that would work? Yes, I think voters are attracted to kindness and honesty. Ha, ah, you've been watching too many children's cartoons. In the real world, people are attracted to wealth and power, and I've got both in spades. There's no reason for me to give up my advantages for the sake of playing nice. But yeah, try it. Try being nice. See if you can go five minutes without insulting someone. Five minutes? Is that a bet? Yes, I bet you can go five minutes without insulting someone. You lose the bet, moron. <laughs> This cat is infuriating. I was about ready to quit on the spot when out of nowhere his personality completely changed. The angry insulting Thunderpaw momentarily disappeared and was replaced by a sadder, gentle demeanor. What's going on? I know what you're trying to say though. I used to be like you. I used to believe in playing fair. That was before. Before? Before what? You just got hired so you don't understand yet. Watch what happens in the primary. You'll see. You'll see why playing nice doesn't work. And he's gone. With that, he's gone. Man, these airlines, Jesus, that's very luxurious. I, what do you mean? Thunderpaw, Thunderpaw. Thunderpaw didn't respond. He curled up in his chair and refused to talk to me anymore. Well, so so much for that. I, is it just me or did he totally morph into a different cat just then? What, what was that all about? I wonder, could that sad, gentle cat be the real Thunderpaw? Ladies and gentlemen, could he? I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. In the next episode, where we're gonna play, uh, 
in the next episode, chapter 3, in which Thunderpaws gets angry and yells a lot, just like the other chapters. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. I'm Weasel. I'm out and hope to see you around. Bye-bye. Our beautiful capital smells of garbage half the year. Let's build a sewer system. You know what? That, that seems fantastic. Yes, I'm, I'm totally down for that. Uh, and as you can see, things up there happen. The mountainous region near the eastern border is unlawful and ruined. I don't care or what are the options. Tell me about the options, actually. We can appoint Sir Henry to govern that region and make him pay for the privilege. Hmm. Wouldn't mind some money? Yeah, sure. Sounds good.